what impact will the cost of living crisis have on collections in the short to medium term? And I'm, I'm going to start with Sam on that one. Thanks. Well, that is the million dollar question right now, isn't it? I think all companies are, are kind of going into think tanks and saying, well, what if? What if it's just a short term thing? What if it's a full blown recession? What if we go back to 1970? What if he pushes a button? What if? And um, I think today there were some articles that came out that the lowest end of the market are going to have a, um, an increase of about 10% on their bills, as opposed to the 5% that's currently out there. Fuel prices have gone through the roof. Um, I don't know how many travelled by car to come to this event. Did you choose a lower down car? Did you choose a petrol car? Did you go electric? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's all of those things. So I think it is just keep talking to your customers and, and being reasonable. And I think in one of the earlier talks we spoke about, you know, you used to have maybe three month payment plans. Then COVID and it was six months payment plans. And actually, you're just going to have to keep extending that and understanding what's affordable. And conduct duty is going to come in and change things even further, but just making sure that you're not pushing people below the breadline. Shiraz? Yeah, look, I mean, it's hard to disagree with, with any of that. I think, in reality, we're probably looking at a number of years' worth of sort of increased costs. I mean, uh, the energy price stuff isn't going to kind of go away quickly. I think we're all focusing on utility bills going up, um, but actually um, that's going to feed into the rest of the distribution chain. So, you know, grocery prices will go up, uh, supermarkets, um, you know, transport and kind of overheads got themselves. So actually that energy crisis is going to lead into increased utility bills and just general increase in cost of living. And you know what, it doesn't take uh, a mathematical genius to kind of figure out, you know, if, if income's staying the same, hopefully, and costs are kind of going up, then whatever is kind of left uh, in terms of free income to, to service debt payments is going to, be, going to be squeezed a little bit. So I think, I think, I think that's almost inevitable. Tony? Yeah, I, I think people have got, over the last couple of years, used to sort of uh, different crises. Obviously, there have been a large part of the population who have had to live on 75% of their salary during furlough. So that there may be an element of, of resilience out there with people already. Um, I think, as always, the people on the margins are, 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 go, are going to suffer most. Um, you know, if you're already a bit in a bit of financial distress, it gets worse. So uh, whether it's um, a longer term thing, uh, I don't know. But I think most companies now are, are, have spent a lot of time working out uh, how to be a bit more proactive uh, with customers. Uh, I think we're a bit less reactive than we used to be. Um, so I think that in itself will, will help as well. But I mean, as a lender, then what we've got to do is, is, is look at what's happening here and now. Uh, and as you always do, adjust what you're doing, making sure uh, that you're taking into consideration uh, the actual circumstances that are going on around people now and not was go what was going on, you know, six months ago. So I think lenders have got a you know, big responsibility knowing what's happening around to their customers. I think, and I think obviously you guys deal with commercial stuff, but yeah. you think there's going to be a bit of an impact on the SME market with owner managers or I think it's probably less, less of an impact? No, I think it is really going to impact them. Um, we're already seeing it now in our sector, um, but I think we're more prepared for it because of COVID, you know, like you just said, you know, we've been more proactive, um, we've been more sympathetic to the customers. Um, so yeah, I think it definitely it's going to impact them. Pete, I think the second point to make, by the way, and it's not there, yeah. but the point is the conflict in Ukraine. Um, I mean, Ukraine is, you know, I've heard the phrase, the breadbasket of sort of Europe, you know, it's, it's a key exporter for lots of really important minerals uh, involved in production you know you've got supply chains that are already elongated because of uh, because of covid you know if you're trying to buy a new car right now you're waiting nine months if you want to buy a porsche by the way they won't even tell you when they can get delivery that's kind of um, you might, problems. clearly clearly <laughs> new um, as well, but actually you know what that means in, in 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 practice is there's a lot of volatility out there right now you know in terms of how that's going to affect people's sort of general living circumstances and I think the other thing that COVID did bring onto the playing field and, and this crisis is going to continue is you're now getting people who are going into debt for maybe the first time. Yeah. I think a lot of us who've worked in the debt collections market have always had people who've got debt and have got multiple debts yeah. and it's, it's, a, it's a skill to budget. 
and I think you, you are now going to go into an area where you've got people who've never needed that skill because we've always, we've been in a bit of a lull of, it's been good times really, hasn't it? <laughs> well, that's kind of changing and you've got, you're going to have new debtors, people who don't understand about budgeting, people who don't understand how to tighten their belts. And I think that's going to come in with how we engage with these first-time customers and what we do with them and how you help them into this new uncharted territory. I think um, Ben alluded to the fact that I've probably been through four, four recessions. Um, <laughs> I, I, we, we used to see that a lot in the commercial world where companies were always um, messing around with the cash flow and didn't pay you on time and were always, you know, you, you used to get a check off of them and guess what, it bounced. When the recession hit, they managed it really well because they were always used to having to do that. It was the, it was the guys who always paid you on the nose, you got paid out every single time. Mm. They're the ones who went, ended up going bust. Because they didn't, you know, they just got completely caught out because they'd always done the right thing, they'd always paid you, and suddenly they couldn't manage the cash flow, and they were the one. So you were almost thinking, when you were doing your risk analysis on businesses, you were actually thinking, well, they're the ones who bounced the check, they must be really risky. But actually, the real risk was the people who, who, yeah. who weren't ready for it, you know, the companies that weren't ready for it. So.